Welcome back. In our previous episode, we explored how we can navigate in our viewport with the tools that will let us say navigate on a fairly small scale, like around a character maybe that's in the center of the scene, but we may run into issues when we try to apply these principles to larger sets. I mean, they'll work no matter what, but on a larger set, like in a fantasy environment, we may have issues if we want to get from the scene center all the way over to like a distant outpost that we want to build things around, like, you know, set lights or position background characters and whatnot. And I wanted to show you a way that we can navigate larger sets in DAS Studio. There's a little trick to this. I have loaded up my Gothic library. That's not a massive set. It's by Stonemason. It's very nice. And if I go move around like we used to, like any with either of these tools here or with my keyboard shortcuts, control, alt, left, click and drag in the viewport, then I can see that there is a set. But sometimes, depending on where I am in the set, I can I may encounter something like this. And that might be very distressing. If you see this a lot, you think, hey, I can't really see the whole set. I don't know what's happening. And and then you might go over here to the scene tab and you think, oh, okay, select the whole group that if you expand it, you have a lot of stuff in this set. But if you select the top portion of it and then you hit control F or use this little frame icon in the viewport, then you go and see the whole set from the outside. And that's kind of neat. So you get a high level overview of what, what your scene or what your set actually looks like. So that is what the library looks like. As I said, not absolutely massive, but now that I'm here, that's a help, but how do I get back inside? I mean, I could go and scroll my mouse wheel here and, you know, I would eventually get there, but imagine the set's really large. What am I going to do now? So one thing you can use is you can open up your whole scene tab or you can look inside the scene tab and then if you know what's what you can go and select an option like say this bookshelf here and I can then go and say control F and then I'll go back to where that item is like so this was the stack of books down here so that'll help but it, once again it only helps if you know what's what so um, that you know I'm stuck behind walls again and I'm having trouble seeing my whole set from the inside so you know it's, it might be cause for frustration we'll work on that so one helper tool I sometimes use is that I place dummy objects around my scene that I know this is where one character is going to be, this is where another character is going to be, and I just use primitives for that. So you head over here and say create a primitive, for example, a sphere. And I might just go and leave the default values here. I'll set that in. But now it's at the very bottom of the scene and it's been created in the center of the scene. So once again, if I go and select that here in my scene hierarchy, which we'll learn a lot more about soon, I can go back into my viewport, say control F, and then I'm at the very center of the scene. So that's one way to at least get back if you're kind of locked in on the outside. Another thing, if you're navigating kind of tight interiors. I might just go and give myself a little bit more space here by closing that tab. Another thing you might notice is that I might want to shoot with a much wider camera. So currently, and we're going to learn more about this, but just for now, trust me, if you want to make your camera a little bit wider so you see more of the room, you can go and head over to the dolly icon here. And rather than left clicking and dragging, and therefore dollying closer and further away from the object, you can also use the right mouse button. And when you do that carefully, carefully, you're actually changing the focal perspective of what you see in the viewport. So if I go, I'm gonna, basically, I'm gonna hold down the right mouse button and move my mouse to the right. And then this happens. If you do too much, it looks rather scary if you go to the left then this happens so we're going to learn more about this and this is a little bit unpredictable but this is something that if you go and right click and move to the right you will see a wider field of view in your viewport so that's going to help you navigate interior sets a little bit better because you just see more of the set but be aware it's a camera trick and you can employ it in your render camera later uh, you can still use the mouse wheel to roll around and the other navigational shortcuts we've learned about but you'll see more of the bookshelves and you see just more of what's going on so that might be of help we're going to learn more about hiding walls like this and hiding roofs in the next part there's just another option that we have to navigate around things in the scene either be that dummy objects or you know the full set once again click on the top level of the set, control F and then 
you see the outside of this whole thing. What happens if I wanted to wander around the set? Like, you know, we're used to it from first person video games. Well, that studio has an option to do that. And that happens with this icon here. This is called the scene navigator tool. So if you select that, then you don't have a manipulator or a gizmo in your viewport anymore. And you can left click and drag anywhere in the viewport and do what we're kind of used to from third person, first person computer games. So left clicking and dragging in the viewport is now not selecting anything anymore, but it'll move the viewport around as if we're looking around it. And that's kind of cool. While looking is nice, we still can't move. And Dash Studio has an option to do that as well, which is in fact called the keyboard navigation. And that works with the A, S, D and W keys on your keyboard. So once again, like we know from first person computer games. So if you hold down the W key, then you can literally move forward. If I hold down the S key, I move backwards. And the speed of which is controlled by a parameter. I'm going to show you. The A and D move me left and right. They call it strafing in computer games, I believe. And then we have another set of keys, which are just above it, which are the Q and the E keys. And they make me go up or go down. So that lets me now go and basically fly through my sets, kind of a flying around mode. So if I do this all the while having my um, left mouse button handy and I can look around as I do this, I can literally go and climb up the stairs. And if I do it in short bursts, I don't go too fast. It kind of depends on how much geometry that studio needs to move while you do this. So you can go and literally explore a set. And if you were to put your best cameraman hat on, you can literally go into nooks and crannies and then turn around around and say, hey, maybe I want to frame up a camera kind of from here because, you know, maybe you want to have that point of view of a character who's behind a wall listening to some secret that's being spilled or whatnot. So yes, it, the speed at which we're moving depends on how much geometry is in the viewport and how much geometry can be moved by your current hardware. But sometimes that's extremely fast and sometimes that's extremely slow. So thankfully there's a way that we can adjust this parameter and override how fast or how slow this is. I'm going to go and move my palette stack back on the left hand side and that is in fact on the tool settings tab down here. See I knew it was going to come in handy to have that open all the time. When we open that up, this changes now depending on which tool I have selected up here. Either up here or it's up here under the tool settings. So uh, scene navigator is selected. Oh yeah, by the way, actually, before I forget, if the ASD and W keys are not working for you for some reason, then it means they're just, um, you know, that, that feature switched off. And there's a hotkey for this. I believe it's shift K. When you select that, then you might be able to look around, but you can't move around anymore. So if you're in that situation, then just hit Shift K, and then that will make the keyboard navigation available. There's just a shortcut there. I believe the City Limits Light layout actually has an icon for that in the toolbar, but alas, we've removed it, one of those things. Shift K, remember that. So there's a value here under Move Controls, which are in fact the same ones that we can use with our keys here. There's a value of 10 right here right now, and I can go and click the plus icon or the minus icon to make that slower or faster. So if I go and increase that value to something like 20 now, then I can see my movement with the keyboard keys is a lot faster than it was before. And if I turn that value to something lower, like four, then this is much slower now as I move. And likewise, we can also use this for the look around sensitivity. So currently it's kind of set to something that I like, but if this is not going fast enough or if it's going too slow for you, then fiddle with the look controls here. So if I do that, if I increase that value to something like 20, then I can see that more of my viewport is being moved as I move my mouse. So it depends on how fast or how slow you need for this to happen. You can also type in a value here, of course. So if I type in my five again, watch what happens. It's a small bug in that studio. I need to, the cursor doesn't go away. So it kind of just lurks around there. So I, I have to press enter and then I just have to click somewhere in this gray area for that cursor to go out again. And then the value is actually set. If you don't do that, then the value doesn't necessarily get you know acknowledged by Das Studio. So one of those things. Small bug there.
But I leave it kind of between 5 and 10, depending on how large my set is. And that is a real, real good help in navigating and exploring large scenes. It also lets you spot really funky camera angles that you might want to shoot from. And once you're there, and you lined up something like we had a few minutes ago here. If I go and position myself here, and I'm thinking, hey, this is a great, great position to shoot from. If I wanted to turn this into a locked off camera angle now, I can head over here to say create. And we're going to learn more about this new camera. And when I have that, I can just turn that into a camera that has the same properties as my perspective view that I'm currently looking through. So hit this value here, copy active view perspective view, hit accept, and then that will have made a camera for us. So this means I can go and wander around with my perspective view. But as soon as I switch it over here from the perspective view to a camera, which I now have, I can now go and see that my previous view has been brought back. And this is how I can set up various views without ruining the one that I've just looked through. So kind of a little looking ahead here, what we're going to do next. But you know, there's so much more to explore. Let's leave it here. So shift K to enable and disable keyboard navigation, and then use the scene navigator to left click and drag in the viewport to look around. That's also a really good helpful tip to navigate larger scenes. In our next episode, we're going to have a look at the viewport options, how my viewport might be looking different to yours, and how you can, you know, change that so that you have a handsome preview of the scene that you're going to build and explore. Join me for that.